So the last time we were all together, we walked through the basic structure of the theater of ancient Greece itself. The theatron, the orchestra, the skein talked about it being an amphitheater, meaning an outdoor theater with a circle or half circle design, the approximate seating capacity, and so on. What I want to touch on now are some of the technical devices that the Greeks developed in order to help stage their plays. Now, when we look at modern theater, especially things like Broadway, we see just how far stage technology has come. Even in compared to something like movies, they do a lot with computerized rigging systems, with holograms, really advanced lighting systems. Of course, the Greeks had none of that. And yet, they still came up with some pretty interesting technology, some of which, believe it or not, we still use today. And there's three major elements that I want to talk about with you today and I want you to be familiar with. So let's talk about those real quick. First up, we have the periactoi. Now, I know that's a weird word, but I like saying it. Periactoi. What the periactoi was, was basically three large painted flats that were hinged together to form a giant triangle. Now keep in mind, this structure could be at least a story tall in some cases. So you have three sides of this structure and on each different side, each different flat, you paint a different scene. So when it's time to change scenes, you simply spin the periactoi around. Now, one of the things you'll hopefully remember from our discussion of the elements of Greek drama. The plays did not take place in more than one location. So each play would only require one major location. But if you're having three or four different plays in a day, it makes changing the scene in between plays relatively quick and painless. The periactoi is actually still in use today. In fact, we have used it multiple times for productions at White Station. What you see here are a couple of our productions where the tech class has built and painted periactoids to make scene changes quicker for us. The second staging device that I'd like you to know about is actually not used very often anymore, at least not unless you're trying to do a realistic recreation of a Greek theater. And that is called the Ikiklema. Ikiklema. You can see it down there on the diagram, the young woman kind of laying across it. What the Ikiklema was, was basically a wagon. So it was a little altar on wheels that dead characters could be wheeled out on stage on so the audience can see them. Remember, one of the things we talked about back in one of the other videos is that even though the Greeks really liked to have bloody, bloody tragedies and wanted their characters to come to some fairly gruesome ends, none of it was ever seen on stage. Remember, a chorus member would usually come out acting as a messenger or something of that nature and would describe the horrible way in which Jocasta hung herself or Oedipus gouged out his eyes or something to that effect. And then they would wheel the body out on stage for the audience to see and then wheel it back. So again, an icky clama is not used as much today. Every so often you'll see a theater get cute and decide they're gonna use something like this. But for the most part, this is a staging element that is still left back with the ancient Greeks. The final staging device is probably the one that they are the best known for. In fact, it is coined a theatrical term that is still widely in use today, and that is called the machine. You can see it on the diagram there, hidden behind the skein, so hidden behind the staging house. You can remember that easily. It rhymes. Machine hides behind the skein. And basically what it was was a giant crane. Now, keep in mind, as we've discussed, the Greeks, first of all, their theaters were all outside, so they didn't have a rigging system, and even if they were inside, they hadn't developed anything quite that complex yet. But this crane was a fairly unique piece of machinery, and what it was used for was to simulate 
some kind of divine intervention, meaning a god or a goddess descending from the heavens, or a character being rescued by a golden chariot pulled by two dragons and then riding up into the sky away from danger. These things became so popular and the audience loved watching it so much that plays began to be written specifically so that they could have the machine ending. So that at the end of the play, one of the gods could come down and set everything right. Hence, this became the term, as you see it underlined and bolded there. This is something to make sure you write down. This became known as the Deus Ex Machina, literally translated God from the machine. So please make sure you should be writing all this down. But the main thing to take away from this, please check out that underlined section, Deus Ex Machina. God from the machine. All right, so there is one other thing that I want you to be aware of as it relates to the Deus Ex Machina, and it relates to the term itself, Deus Ex Machina. Now, this term is still around in modern theatrical lingo, but it has taken on a very different meaning from where it started, especially as theater has gone through many, 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 many different evolutions over the course of its history. Now, as we just discussed, the spectacle of watching these actors rise to the heavens and then descend down became so popular that some Greek playwrights would write plays just so they could use it, would write plays where they would get their characters into the worst possible situations they could ever be in, where there is no conceivable escape, and then, lo and behold, some heavenly intervention comes along, descends from the heavens, and fixes everything. Okay? Now, that element has carried over into modern lingo, especially when it relates to what we would now refer to as a lazy ending. Have you ever seen a movie or a television show or something where our heroes are in the worst possible situation. Nothing can possibly save them. Everything is coming down on them. Everything is going to end. Oh, we're so doomed. And then literally at the last second, oh, look, here's a magical doohickey that we've never mentioned before, have never given you any kind of background on, but if you get that magical doohickey, it will save the day. That magical doohickey has come to be referred to as a deus ex machina, basically referring to a lazy ending. You put your characters in a situation you can't get them out of, and instead of trying to figure out a logical way for them to get out of it, well, here's a magical doohickey. It's never spoken of before, never heard from again, and that's it. Um, I don't know how modern this reference is. You're going to find I make a lot of uh, outdated reference, but if anybody has ever seen uh, the first Lord of the Rings movie, one of the big deus ex machina that people have been talking about for years in terms of that film is, of course, the eagles that come and save them at the end, drop them off, and then fly away, and you don't see them again until the end of the third movie. So a lot of people refer to that as a modern deus ex machina. So please make sure that you understand, understand, sorry, Please make sure that you understand both definitions of a deus ex machina. So God from the machine, the large crane that would lower and raise people up off the stage, but also make sure you understand the modern terminology for it. Basically a shorthand for an easy fix or a lazy ending. We are almost done with the Greeks. We've got one more guy to talk about, but it's pretty important. And we will cover that next time.